So for starters, with road maintenance, uh, we finished up Stevens Road as connectors. All the ones that were public, at least, were not able to touch any of the private roads until we had the easements required. Uh, we wrapped up with uh, Lucian Soil Road. Uh, we also had a dust applicator uh, applied to uh, Pinion. Uh, it's already deteriorated, so we're not going to be using that chemical compound again. It's already creating gigantic clouds of dust, which uh, our businesses over there are getting ground out by dust. Am I all right? No. Uh, John, uh, I agree with you. Over there. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, they're getting uh, smoked out of there with dust material. Um, it's basically a bearing road anyways with no material, just like camp. Camp ranch needs material. We'll get into that later, but uh, we'll go through before the end of the week, hopefully, and we'll get uh, fresh material applied to Pinion, and that should really help compact everything down, keep it down, keep the dust under control. Um, also, I'm getting cost estimates prepared for uh, guardrails and signage on that small concrete box bridge that's right there behind the bank. Super risky. We're going to try and clean up, do some grubbing on that shrubbery that's just kind of overgrown because it, it really does sneak up on you, and that bridge is super narrow. Lots of traffic goes up and down that road right there. So we're gonna try and take care of it, make sure it's as safe as possible. Um, so moving forward from that, um, we did do a bunch of grub work, work this week um, and taking care of a lot of the drainage situations. You have a lot of silt, a lot of shrubs, a lot of trees, uh, boulders, rocks, etc., that have been covering up the tin horns up and down Camp Ranch. Uh, we had some contractors come out, replace actually, uh, I believe it was five, to, uh, tin horns in total that we've replaced entirely. We laid all new material on top, built the, uh, the structure over, the, the berm over it as well, uh, cleared out the drainage pathways so that way the road will stop from flooding over and once you got that road during any significant rainfall event, uh, that water's just going to continue damaging it until you can get the drainage situation fixed and so that's what we went in and did for Camp Ranch and so we'll keep an eye on that as we move forward, make sure that that road is draining sufficiently uh, as we continue to look forward to improvements to Camp Ranch. Um, so moving forward from that. Uh, and yes, sir. Question real quick yeah. Leave Camp Ranch Road. How many, how many, how many cones or, or culverts did we replace on Camp Ranch? I think off the top of my head, I, I believe it was five in total. Okay. I believe it was five. And we actually doubled down. So there's one tin horn as you come around the S bend. We swapped that one out, cleared it out, made sure it drains correctly, and then there was a, a second one as soon as, as soon as you come around on the right hand uh, curve before you hit the straightaway. Uh, we actually uh, placed double there, so we, we added an additional ten horn to that facility, and that's one where Jeff and I we went out and took a look at it. And Jeff made a couple recommendations on how we can make that area flow a little bit better. So we're we're going through and we're improving them. The ten horns were actually also previously damaged uh, from the counties. Sorry, John. Kind of greater operator that kind of clipped the top of the, the tin horn and it created a, a hole in the surface and it was just kind of a, a about, dangerous pummel that people were and tear for many, many into. Years uh, yeah, it was wearing tear and, and then uh, and then shaving off the tops of them. But it's okay. We've we've had a talk. John's all over it. He's uh, made the corrective action. We've swapped out those tin horns. It's it, everything's flowing correctly. Um, is there anything else on camp? Uh, we'll, we'll actually touch back on camp here okay. in just a second later on in my report. Thank you. Um, so uh, I've submitted the grant that we talked about mm -hmm. during the last meeting. We submitted the grant for uh, milling out and repaving Old Hochitown Road. Uh, the cost estimate came back at that for just a little over 500000 Uh The grant that we had written for uh, was for uh, 125000 um, and the Keto board uh, is making their selection and approval of applications on October 16th, so we should hear official word back uh, if we are to uh, receive that funding uh, early of next year. That's whenever they'll, they'll do their release. Um, the grant application that I wrote uh, in partnership with the county um, to pave Camp Ranch Road with asphalt, uh, that would be the entire two mile stretch. Uh, it was uh, rejected by the Booker County Board of County Commissioners, so we're looking into alternatives on how we can still take care of Camp Ranch if we're not going to uh, get this grant. We're going to look for other routes on how we can go ahead and uh, make some improvements to that roadway. Um, after we get our uh, master service agreements in order, which is later on in this meeting for our engineering firms, uh, we'll explore a little bit more detailed plan moving forward with camp, and we'll have a couple of different options that we'll present to the board on what we want to do. Do we want to do gravel? Do we want to do chip seal? Do we want to do asphalt? Do we want to phase it up? Do we want to break it down? What exactly and how exactly should we go about this? I'll have some options prepared for you guys, um, hopefully by November's meeting. 
or some things that we can pick from. Um, so far, we've conducted, uh, Howard has, in his report, he reported that we've paid 119,000, uh, but we have acquired uh, invoices for a total of $139,000 worth of repairs, and we are still going to receive a couple more invoices, it's just we haven't received them back from the contractor yet, so we're, we're floating at about 139,000 in total expenditures to be anticipated. Um, uh, moving forward from that, uh, zoning regulations. With my emails to the board, we've engaged TSW to prepare a very uh, minimal, uh, essentially skeleton plan of our zoning regulations, so that way we can get something passed and on the books and start protecting our land uses here in town. Because um, right now, technically without any of this enacted, um, you can have uh, someone buy some land down the street and put down a landfill, and you don't have any regulations that protect anyone around that. So this is in the best interest of all of our property owners here in town to make sure that we, we protect our neighbors. Um, so the plan is, yes, we're giving you an um, estimate of, as far as the time, how long that gives the day, or have we even started that process? Yes, so this week, uh, TSW sent out a draft of the zoning regulations, and I took that. They, should, they sent it out to our planning and zoning committee, so they're all at, currently in review of it, and they're going to meet uh, here in the next couple weeks. They're going to sit down, they're going to meet, they're going to... Uh, hash the rest of that out, but I did also forward that to each of the board members as well. So if you go through your emails, you'll find the zoning regs as a draft. Uh, and if you have any uh, thoughts, recommended changes, or concerns, uh, please let me know. Reach out to me, and, and I'll be able to get you an answer, or we can work on it and make the changes together. Um, so the plan is to pass this initial skeleton version of zoning regs first, just so we have something enacted to protect our properties, um, and then our planning and zoning committee will still. Uh, be putting together the fully fledged uh, and detailed uh, set of zoning regulations that we've been working on uh, for probably what eight nine months now. That's at this point, and so uh, they're still going to put together the full version. This is just something very minimal to get us uh, some protections in order first. Um, I've also requested TSW to prepare a cost estimate and task order. Uh, for us to fully finish our code of ordinances because we have a number of things that are missing that need to be included in there for us to operate. Uh, and then also our subdivision regulations, which is just uh, guidelines, rules, parameters for the planning process, how you come in, how you apply, uh, what information needs to be on the plat, what is expected from the developer, and what's expected on the town's end whenever you're trying to create a subdivision in the community. Um, so now for police. Uh, we had a total of 38 applicants for our position of police chief. Uh, we're currently in the process of narrowing down to uh, our first top eight applicants, and each candidate is receiving a very thorough uh, and careful review uh, as we at construction we can narrow down to our, our top eight. And then once we get our top eight established, we'll start doing our preliminary phone call interviews and then we'll schedule out. If you guys want to do two rounds of in-person interviews, that's an option we can do. Or if you want to scream out over a phone call and just have one in-person interview, we can do it a number of different ways. <laughs> but we're narrowing them down as we speak, doing some background research on each of the candidates. Uh, so as far as the fire department goes for, uh, the job description, I just completed that yesterday. And, and the job should be posted by the end of business today. Uh, we're going to be posting that on Oklahoma Municipal League, uh, we're going to be posting it to all of our local papers here in Curtin County. We're going to be posting it to the Oklahoma State Firefighters Association. We're going to be uh, posting it to the Texas Municipal League as well. And then also, you know, indeed, all of your regular job oriented websites as well. Um, we've also conducted interviews of applicants for the position of deputy clerk and treasurer. Um, this we're now at the step where we're performing the uh, professional reference checks, just doing a little bit of background, getting a little bit of background information on these candidates. And I do actually have a report on the candidates um, for if we need to talk about this later in the executive session, I have a report for each of you on, on how everything came back to us. And uh, a little bit to maybe answer some people's questions about what the changes involved uh, with some of the ordinances, the big long text later on down. That was to, the idea behind that is to change the structure of government so that those positions are no longer elected slash volunteer positions, that they're actually hired by the town and the town board of trustees can hire a professional that has you know financial background or clerk background, et cetera, but what is to move away due to the, the amount of time that's invested in those roles, the energy, the effort, 
the, the level of work that they have to deal with. Um, and then also you get someone that's from that background and ideally would have already experienced you know, working in those platforms and that element. So we can get into that uh, a little bit more in detail later on. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to set up a meeting right now with our regional postmaster. Uh, I believe she's out of Norman. Uh, so I'm working with Pat McFerrin and Mark Wayne Mullen's office to arrange that meeting and I'll get with the board later on and we can hash out what sort of presentation we'd like to make in front of them. But again, this is uh, for our goal of uh, either reestablishing our historical zip code uh, or getting a new one if, if that's what they're saying that we have to do. And this is again to, for us to push forward with having our own uh, zip code for the community. Uh, and uh, as far as STR compliance uh, solution goes for, um, we have officially transitioned away from Avenue. Uh, the hotline for the town of Coach Town with Avenue is no longer online. All of their forms are down. Uh, we've already received our first wave of data, documents, and filings from them. And we should get a, a second and final dump, I believe. Versus, is, is it going to be the full, the last bit that we need? Okay, okay so it would be around the 15th, the 17th, et cetera. And then that's whenever we'll get our, our final sheets of information from them. Um, but uh, yeah, we've sent out a series of uh, physical mailer communications to all of the addresses that we had on file with Avenue. I think that was a little over 800. Um, and we've also sent out mass e email notifications, trying to do everything that we can to get the word out there. You know, we posted it on the website, we posted it on Facebook. I'm finding uh, pretty good success rates with our email campaign. Um, it, I'm getting a lot of responses. I'm noticing that people are opening the emails, they're asking questions, they're getting involved. They, we had a pretty good turnout for our virtual meeting. A lot of people couldn't make it, but we did re-upload uh, the recording as well, so that if you didn't make it, you can go back and you can check our Facebook and you can watch uh, everything that we had gone over. And again, if you have any questions about our STRs, please uh, give us a call here at Town Hall. Does anyone have uh, questions about anything else? No. Comment on the SDRs and, and changeover. And Chris has showed me before the meeting started. Chris, jump in here, girl. How many, how many uh, compliments have we had within 24 hours? We've had a lot. Going online. Um, yeah. um, several on Facebook was shared with uh, from the media team. And then countless emails, phone calls. People are really happy about the simpler solution. Um, and even in the bulk pane, um, they're finding that that spreadsheet is going to be saveable and reusable. So everyone's really happy. We haven't had any um, <coughs> negative feedback, minus human error on their end. So we were able to help them with that. But no, it's been so good. And so far, we've been online with them for less than 48 hours, and we've already had 15 tax payments and seven SDR licenses. Okay. Great. Um, so. Linda, Linda or Melissa, do you have any comments? I know you've on the spot, but I know it's good. The meeting was great. Um, I haven't jumped in yet okay. to it. Um, I did sign up uh, for an SCR permit for a cabin I just took on, and that was pretty simple. Okay, just Good. let us know. Good. Yeah, okay. Brendan? So we have some permits that we never received from Avenue, and we reached out a couple of times and we had no response. So I can help you with that. Oh, oh may, I, yeah. may I compliment this young lady for helping me? <laughs> she heard my complaint the other day. Then we went to work and she had it resolved. Yeah, Chris has been a rock star through this whole transition. Um, she and I have been able to just toss her all the things that need to be done and, and she's checked all the boxes and she's answered all the calls and uh, really if anyone's had any problems at all, Chris has been there for the people and carried them through and helped them resolve their errors. So, good job, Chris. I have a question about the, uh, the grant that you had the application that was denied. Before you do that, can I yeah. say one thing to the SDR before we change the subject? Is I, the, the way everything went down with Avenue and everything, I think it would be a good idea if, as a board, we were <coughs> to just remove the $300 uh, fee and just go to a $100 a year uh, permit fee and waive for 300 I know we can't make that decision today, but that would be something. Cause, and then. You were going to look and see how many had paid the three hundred already. Yeah, uh, Chris, I think she pulled the statistics. We out. have thirteen um, in September, and I haven't checked the paper filings. Yeah, with Charles out of town. But I think the number to take care of anybody that had paid three hundred is going to be relatively small, and I think that would be just a token <coughs> from the town 
to everybody since it was kind of, I guess, our fault. Maybe we hired Avenue. It was such a debacle that I think that would just be a good sign of faith from us to the STR business since it is a business that supports us and pays most of our taxes. And it, it would make all our cabin management companies very happy. Mm -hmm. So it's just an idea, something we might move forward with. Can we maybe move that to a subcommittee discussion for one? Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, just curious why the Board of County Commissioners rejected the grant. Uh, well, we've got one of our county commissioners here today. Maybe you can answer on their behalf. I don't mean to try to spot. Okay, hey, so before John goes, let me just make a comment. Um, I read what was written in the paper, and I think part of that is the miscommunication. If yes. that was presented to me the same way, I also would have voted no. Because the way it was presented was, hey, let's give millions of dollars to a road in Cochitown, which means we won't get our roads ever because it's a, you know, there's what, a 1.5 million annual budget for it? Uh, I think it was the presentation that probably nixed that deal. And honestly, I'm saying I, I can't well, find the was, county commissioners to not look at the district. There was a number of issues. Yeah. The, one, the, the whole way the break came to me, and I approached Adam about it, I think as well as Mr. Howard. Um, when they asked us to apply for this grant, mm -hmm. they did not have all the answers and all the information that this grant has to go through. They just said the money's here, it needs to go somewhere. So why not go to uh, help out with tourism? So that's why we applied for the grant, and then we found out the process it has to go through, and then I knew, and I'm pretty sure Adam knew that it was enough to go back. Uh, did I think it might pass through our Board of County Commissioners? I, I thought it might, but in all honesty, I didn't see it really passing the CED, um, that they would have to approve it. So what the, what the commissioners, um, reason why they didn't, I didn't get a motion from them or our, our second, is because they would have to push all their projects to the side that they've already spent money on and then once you start spending money on it and you move your project, then you just lose that money amount for not correcting that, David. And so they have got money spent on these projects. They're not going to want to push it back. But uh, originally, I think the, the cost estimates for those roads uh, both were a little, bit, a little bit too high. But who's to say we couldn't try again in the future and, and have some success? There's more than one way to solve the problems of Hocha Town, and we will find another way to continue to work on roads that we've done. So, um, thanks, John. I appreciate you being here and uh, yes, you know, giving us some opportunities to try to work together. Anything else for Adam? Right. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Adam. Mm -hmm.